Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. In a political blitz, Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu leaves opposition leader Yitzhak Herzog out of the government while securing an agreement with far-right Israel Beitenu's chairman, Avigdor Lieberman, promising to appoint him as defense minister. Israel's military announces it had successfully developed a version of its anti-rocket Iron Dome defense system that can be fired from a deck of a cruising navy ship to protect its offshore gas platforms. Egypt Air flight number MS-804, carrying 66 passengers and crew on a flight from Paris to Cairo, went missing early this morning, disappearing from radar over the Mediterranean Sea. In the past several days, it appeared that a course had been set for Isaac Herzog's center-left Zionist Union Party, which is the second-largest faction in the 120-seat Knesset, to agree on an alliance with Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's center-right Likud party in forming a unity government. But in a surprise move, Avigdor Lieberman, who heads the far-right Israel Beitenu faction and served as foreign minister in Netanyahu's previous government, was summoned to the Prime Minister's residence in Jerusalem, during which the two men reached several agreements that lay the groundwork for Lieberman's faction to join Netanyahu's government. Knesset member Avigdor Lieberman is expected to be appointed defense minister, replacing former chief of staff and long-serving defense minister Moshe Yalon. Lieberman was quoted following the revelation of his anticipated appointment to Israel's top defense official as saying receiving the defense ministry is to me an important stage in shattering the glass ceiling that we, the community of immigrants from the former Soviet Union, have been facing over the years. Lieberman's Israel Beitenu faction will also receive Israel's Immigration Absorption Ministry, as well as reaching various agreements on significant demands that were initially rejected by Netanyahu and kept Lieberman out of the government up to date. Meanwhile, Israeli opposition leader Yitzhak Herzog said that bringing the ultra-nationalist politician Avigdor Lieberman into the Israeli government would lead to policies that are on the brink of madness. <laughs> Lieberman, whose party has six Knesset seats, demanded the defense portfolio as well as new legislation that would impose the death penalty on Palestinians carrying out fatal attacks. Now to another matter, the Israeli military announced that it had successfully developed a version of the anti-rocket Iron Dome defense system that can be fired from a deck of a cruising navy ship to protect its offshore gas platforms. Colonel Ariel Scheel, the Israeli Navy's head of operational systems, said the augmented defense system passed a live test two weeks ago when it shot down several short-range ballistic missiles from a moving boat. Israel has boosted its naval defenses over the past decade after the discovery of sizable natural gas deposits off the Mediterranean coast. While the biggest fields are far from shore, the gas flows to platforms in shallower waters that can be seen from the southern Israeli coast, putting them in range of the kinds of rockets fired by Islamic militants in the Gaza Strip. Iron Dome batteries have proven capable of shooting down around 90% of Palestinian rockets fired from Gaza, according to both Israel and the United States, which has helped bankroll the system. The latest test proved that the Iron Dome of the Sea is operational and it will improve the Navy's capability to protect Israel's strategic assets at sea against short-range ballistic rockets. Now in other news, an Egypt air flight carrying 66 passengers and crew members on a flight from Paris to Cairo went missing early this morning, disappearing from radar over the Mediterranean Sea. Officials with the airline and the Egyptian Civil Aviation Department said they believe the Airbus A320, flight number MS-804, probably crashed into the sea. ونذكر حضراتكم بالخبر العاجل حيث صرح مصدر مسؤول بمصر للطيران 
بأن رحلة الشركة رقم 408 التي أقلعت من مطار شارل ديغول بباريس في تمام الساعة الحادية عشر وتسع دقائق مساء أمس بتوقيت باريس وعلى متنها تسعة وخمسون راكبا إضافة إلى عشرة أفراد هم طاقم الطائرة قد اختفت من على الرادار في ساعة مبكرة من صباح اليوم وجاري التأكد من البيانات الواردة Aboard the flight were 30 Egyptians, 15 French nationals, along with nationals from 10 other countries. French Prime Minister Emmanuel Valls said his country does not rule nothing out as to why the airplane went missing, stressing the authorities in Paris are in close contact with their Egyptian counterparts in a combined effort to locate the plane. We are in contact with three with the authorities, Egyptian, civil and military. Les autorités égyptiennes ont déjà euh, dépêché des équipes euh, de reconnaissance euh, aérienne sur place et la France est, est prête à participer aux recherches si les autorités égyptiennes, bien sûr, euh, le demandent. Je crois qu'à ce stade, aucune hypothèse ne peut être écartée sur euh, les causes euh, de cette euh, disparition. Et malheureusement, euh, il y aura sans doute, et nous aurons cette information, plusieurs de nos compatriotes dans, dans ce vote. Now with regard to Turkey, the European Parliament announced it expects Turkey to meet its 72 criteria, including changes to its counter-terrorism law, required under an agreement to curb the influx of illegal migrants in exchange for both financial and travel benefits. Brussels wants Ankara to narrow its legal definition of terrorism and change some other laws to meet EU standards, as part of the wide-ranging deal to secure Turkish help in reducing the flow of migrants into Europe in return for visa-free travel for Turks to EU countries. Marie Cheschake, Dutch lawmaker, is the head of a humanitarian rights delegation visiting Turkey, said the 72 criteria that Turkey is required to meet were agreed in 2013, long before the migrant agreement was reached. She said there were concerns about the use and abuse of anti-terror laws to stifle or silence the legitimate speech of journalistic freedom or media freedom, as well as the Turkish opposition. Changes of the anti-terrorism law are now a hot topic of discussion around the visa liberalization criteria. Let me be very clear. The visa liberalization criteria have been agreed between the EU and Turkey in 2013. There are 72 criteria that have been put on paper. The European Parliament believes that these criteria should be met before we can bring the visa liberalization question to a vote. Turkey's presidential spokesman, however, ruled out making any changes to its counter-terrorism laws, saying such a move would be encouraging terrorist organizations. Terror karşısında bizim aldığımız tedbirlere, mevcut yasalara da herkesin saygı duyması gerekir. Onun da ötesinde Türkiye'ye destek olması gerekir. Çünkü Türkiye'nin güvenliği Avrupa'nın güvenliğidir. İşte bunu açık bir şekilde gördük. Dolayısıyla bu tabloyu yok sayarak bir takım faraziyelerden hareketle ya da bir takım marjinal görüşleri esas alarak Türkiye gerçeğini doğru okumadan yapılan bu tavsiyelerin elbette bizim nezdimizde bir karşılığı yok. Biz şu anda terörle çok ciddi bir mücadele veriyoruz. Burada terör örgütüne nefes aldıracak, terör destekçilerini sevindirecek, onları cesaretlendirecek bir düzenleme içerisine girmemiz elbette söz konusu değil. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's spokesman also noted that the security situation in the southern Turkish border town of Kilis had improved partially in the recent days as a result of artillery shelling by the Turkish army and coalition airstrikes after months of rocket fire from Syria by the Islamic State, which has killed some 21 people so far this year. The Islamic State has repeatedly targeted Kilis, which hosts a large Syrian refugee population since January, but no rocket attacks have been reported in the past week. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Essa, Neve Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.